Welcome back to another GK Tech How To. This time we will be replacing the S13 180SX, 240SX, and R32 Hikus tie rod replacement kit, as the OEM Hikus rods are made of low quality chopsticks. We will be tossing on our Mucho Higher Strength rods to our Hikus fitted 240SX to replace said super weak, skipped leg and arm day bendy boys that came as a gift to you from Nissan. These fresh dudes are adjustable and more importantly, rebuildable in case you decide to wall tap a curb with your wheel. Taking a peep down below and to the rear, I mentioned those low quality chopsticks from earlier. There are Chinese finger traps stronger than these bad boys. Let's get that crap out of the car and beef up that rear end, shall we? Grab your favorite pair of zip tie snips and snip the zip. Slide that boot out of the way to give access to the inner tie rod, hold from the outside and loosen the nut on the tie rod end, then go inside and loosen the inner from the actual Hikus unit itself. Once done, finish unwinding the inner tie rod from the end however you see fit. Now let's head to that infamous metal bench where years of pent up box wiggles have been wiggled. Speaking of, Zach is currently giving this box the beans and will probably open it any second to reveal its guts. Those being the kit itself. You get some dust boots but those are optional as these bearings are PTFE lined. Next up is the beef rod itself, which if you don't know, now you know, didn't skip leg and or arm day and trained evenly across months and months of workouts. This replaces the paper M12 inner that is probably bending just from the thought of how buff the GK unit is. This thing will give you more adjustment and is rebuildable for those that are keeping on top of their 240,000 mile car service. More importantly, this thing is strong AF. This bad unit's inner and outer strength comes from being whittled out of 4130 chromoly steel, my friends, and has our largest PTFE lined heim tossed in for good measure, which is a commonly sized bearing and can be replaced if need be. Side note, we do have these on the shelf so you can carry around a spare with you or perform said mileage maintenance. Now as with all of our adjustable components, there is a safe minimum and maximum adjustment so you lovely people out there can have adequate thread engagement, which I will explain thusly. That being 73 millimeters measuring from the center of the bearing to the end of the Hikus tie rod shaft where the locking nut bottoms out. Then, the overall length you're looking for is going to come in at 243 millimeters, measuring the same way as before. Again, this is the maximum safe length we recommend using, so anything under this is safe to send. Or just set it to OEM length by measuring off the pencil you just removed from the car. Speaking of the old pencil, comparing the OEM rod to the GK Tech unit is like comparing apples to Mount Everest. The OEM one you currently have probably has tons of play, and if it isn't bent, it's probably bending right now from the pure strength of Zach's wiggle fingers. If it doesn't have any play, you haven't clutch kicked hard enough, my guy. Bend the bendy boy, and let's get back to installing the buffness. Remove the nut, washer, and bolt, which separates and attaches the clevis to the heim. Now that that's separated like your parents, grab some Loctite and put a dab or six on the threads as shown. Now grab the clevis, hold it up to the hikus bar, and thread in the Loctited bolt, making sure the clevis is horizontal, aka holes facing the front and rear of the car as clearly demonstrated here. Once set, tighten it all down, then torque to the specs shown right here on this screen. Since this can be done on the car, here's a little bit of a pro tip for you. Head up and loosen and remove the bolt holding the Hikus unit onto the car from the side you're working on. Then head to the opposite side and loosen it without removing. This will give you room to breathe and make the install a little easier. Now that you got the floater bar going on, go ahead and insert the Heim with the inserts installed into the clevis. Then grab the washer and bolt and pop that through the side facing the front of the car so the threads pop out towards the rear. If fitted the opposite way, the threaded portion would make sweet sweet love to your subframe, which I promise you do not want to watch. Now go ahead and tighten, then torque the bolt to the specs shown here. Once complete and torqued all sick-like, pop the bar back up and install the bolt and washer holding it to the subframe. Repeat this entire process for the other side and once done, tighten, then torque both of them down to the specs shown here. There are a few ways to do this, but we have found this to be the simplest way to make it happen. Again, looking for max thread engagement is shown here. Because we have a lot of threading to do, we need to head on up and loosen and remove the nut and bolt holding the camber arm to the nuck, as well as the traction arm nut and bolt as well. 
Once free, the nut can bend just far enough so you can get your thread on. So go ahead and wind the new rod end in, matching up as close as you can with where it was before. This can be accomplished with your highly calibrated eyeballs, because that's how drift guys do things. What even is a ruler? Once set, pop the bolt and nuts back into the upper camber arm and the traction rod, and you guessed it Mr. Calibrated Eyeballs, go ahead and tighten and torque both to the specs shown on the screen. Now like other installs we've done here on the old GK Tech channel, when we have a bearing installed, you want to make sure it's not cocked to the left or to the right, but running centrally as clearly pictured here. Once straight, secure the rod from the rod holding point, then tighten the inner lock nut. Once secure, move on to tightening the outer lock nut against the rod end, and that's it my dudes. You now have way less balsa in your life, way more chromolies, and way more adjustment than you actually know what to do with. Good luck with all that. Now go get an alignment if your eyes aren't calibrated like ours, or not. Speaking of calibrated eyes, this is the GK Tech crew coming at you with 75% from Australia, meaning we all love drifting 100%. So go check our tubes out. If you cannot install these, please have a professional do it and or reach out with any questions via 56k dial up in an email from your AOL account. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, Josh, and Wigglefinger Zach with another GK Tech How-To. Peace.